Good morning, Steve. How are you? Fantastic, Dan. Good to see you. Oh, it's uh, it's been a while. We both took last weekend off. Yeah. And you, you and your Swiss cheese schedule here, here a week, there a week, gone a week, everywhere a week, week. It's jet setting, <laughs> jet setting around the world. Uh, jet setting around Florida, right? And Georgia, and then Baltimore at the end of the month. Um, speaking of Florida, how did you fare the storm? It rolled right over me. Uh, it was it was not great. Um, it was as of Tuesday. It was going to be like hitting, just stay on the Gulf Coast side, maybe go toward the Panhandle in Louisiana. Um, but then it decided to make a hard right on Tuesday and like cut right over Disney, right toward me. Basically, went up I four, and uh, uh, so I. Had, this is the first time I've been in this office for more than about twenty minutes because the dehumidifier has been running and the fans have been running. The carpet got all soaked. Rain basically. The building was great, except there was so much water pouring down the side of the building and so much force from the winds. It basically pushed it through every pore of the building and it got under the carpeting. It came in under the door. So I, I'm up on a slight elevation. So it's not a flooding problem where I'm at, but there was just so much water in the air and being hit with so much force. It just came under the door. It was shooting under the door Ooh. and uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. But thankfully, no damage. So, I mean, I lost a couple of books. I lost a lot of packing supplies, like, you know, good stuff that people who do Kickstarters really like, the, the, like the, the hard mailers, the, um, you know, foldable boxes, tons of, tons of shipping materials got destroyed, but nothing irreplaceable so far. Right. I mean, I, have, I haven't opened up every single box and fingers crossed, but anyway, fine. Okay, well, good, good to yeah. The people on the West Coast, the people on the Gulf Coast, had a much tougher time. So you know, I I, I can't complain. Um, gorgeous weather here in Tennessee this last week. So fall. Oh, nice. Fall, That's fall, nice. Fall has finally hit us. Um, so let's see, where do we begin? Um, let me first start off. Though. I did a show in Huntsville about two weeks ago. And it was our second show in Huntsville, Stand Up Live, the Catacombs of Comedian show, and it went really well. But uh, we were gifted a artisan dice maker there. Nerd Zilly gave us each a box of custom made dice. That's awesome. Which is very cool. Yeah. Uh, and um, I mean, she does remarkable work. And it says Ari there because that's the NPC name. And he is, if you follow along with the campaign, you know he's a an agent. Sure. And she gave me, and you really can't see these, but there's a little scroll inside the dice. That's epic. Yeah. And there are all sorts of neat-looking dice. And I wanted to give her a shout-out, Nerdzilly. She's available. She's online everywhere, and I think you're seeing it backwards there. But... Um, so, you know, every, everybody got their own custom made according to their character, you know. And it's N-E-R-D-Z-I-L-L-Y? Yes. Just and, put that uh, in the chat. And so, you know, we, you know, I appreciate it. And so that gave me an idea that for the, we have a Halloween show, the Side Splitting Spectacular is coming to Huntsville October 19th. There was a lot of date scheduling and jumping and moving around and shuffling, but I had to make two posters because the date changed. But here we go. I've got Catacombs and Comedians, Side Splitting Spooktacular, October 19th in Huntsville, um, Alabama. And what day of the week is that? It's a. I don't know. I think it's a Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. And. I thought they've got a great open spot when you walk into the club with plenty of room. And I thought, hey, how about if we have like a little vendor set up where a nerd Zilly could set up a small table and have her dice set up. Um, and so I'm giving I'm having a couple local Huntsville role playing game artisans, nerd Zilly being one of them, uh, another dice pouch maker. Um, and I'll have all the names. I don't have them in front of me right now, but, uh, and like someone who builds uh, wood dice trays and towers and stuff. Nice. I call it the ninth level gaming. I think they might be named, 
But we're gonna set up a little, and I'm stealing this from the old oh, from the old Dragon magazines that TSR used to put out. But I'm having a we're having a bazaar of the bazaar. Nice. And it's kind of like a little merchant area at the beginning of the show, and there'll be a catacombs and comedians table as well as these other vendors set up selling artists and D and D stuff. I wish I could do it for the Nashville show, but they just don't have the layout to make it work. Right. How do comedians there? How do comedians sell their merch? Yeah, exactly. Sell- yeah, I sell T-shirts now for, for catacombs of comedians at the end of a show. Gotcha. So we're gonna have this, and um, we'll see. Hopefully, it'll work. And if it does, you know. But again, I'm stressing that Dungeons and Dragons and role playing games is very much a community. And you know, if you know the support that Nerdzilla gives us by you know treating us to custom dice, I want to make sure you know I can give back to rather than just shouting out you know, her name during shows and, you know, here on the podcast that, you know, give her an opportunity and hopefully, you know, it becomes a regular thing in Huntsville with, um, with the Catacombs of Comedian show that, which would be very cool. So I got that going. And then there's October 24th in Zany's Nashville. Oh, wow. We've got the side splitting spectacular. So, the 19th and the 24th, I've got two different Halloween shows. That's fantastic. Um, spread myself thin? No, not at all. No, no, no. You will be exhausted. <laughs> you have a... <laughs> um, no, it was really weird working this all out because I, because originally the Huntsville show is going to be on the 26th. So I was going to have Monday show in Nashville... The Huntsville show Wednesday, and then I'm sealing the Violent Femmes here in Nashville on Thursday. So, that's great. But um, so yeah, so we got two Catacombs of Comedians Halloween specials. You know, um, no Vincent Price, unfortunately, and um, but they're side splitting spectaculars. The Huntsville will have the Bazaar, the Bazaar with some vendors, and there are definitely going to be tricks. There are going to be treats at these shows. The special Halloween themed monsters. Uh, the foul boar has gotten a complete makeover to really? fit Dungeons and Dra- or no, to fit the Halloween theme. Actually, four makeovers. So take that for what you know, what that might mean. And um, so yeah, nobody will walk out of the either show empty-handed. There will be treats That's for great. everybody. So um, if you are in the Nashville area, it's October twenty-fourth at Zany's. If you're in the Huntsville area, it's October nineteenth it stand up live that is my spiel on the catacombs and comedian show upcoming dates that's great so how about you what do you got going that's exciting uh i'm i'm still frazzled from picking up the pieces from the storm um i am working on i'm still working on my uh my kickstarter rewards for uh for actually for both of the campaigns and then getting ready for uh the baltimore comic-con in the October 28th through the 30th in Baltimore, my last show of the year, I think. Um, and so that would be the last, the, the only time I'll miss a show this year, I, uh, an episode this year, I think, uh, unless, uh, unless the Titans play again or something like that. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, m- mostly just been playing catch up. Uh, I lost about four or five days because of the storm, no power, no electricity. It was kind of nice to digitally detox. I would like to have had air conditioning while I was doing it, but uh but uh again i dodged a bullet so i I can't complain um so also this week we've got a new D &D one Uh uh-huh more for your binder more for (laughs) the binder (laughs) um i haven't really had a chance to go over it much but it's uh, i guess it's mostly feats and the two x or the three expert classes ranger Uh bard and rogue rogue yeah yeah forget my favorite class um again i guess from the feedback online you know that you read the facebook posts and the twitter posts a lot of complaining of course but that's always a squeaky no one goes to twitter to say nice job yeah this is great um (laughs) i think they what the they changed that um inspiration to heroic inspiration instead of rolling if you roll a 20 you get inspiration now if you roll a one yeah yeah the, all those little tweaks and stuff like that and and the changing of the classes they, they i like the idea that there are the the four class categories 
like experts, one of the four categories of types of classes and expert just seems to be a uh, jack of all trades um, complicated. Like basically if you're going to play D and D don't start with these, don't start with bard, don't start with character classes that really have more, have so much ridiculous flexibility that although rogue is it always felt like a, but who knows? Who knows how they're going to change things? It just seems like expert went like, okay, are you going to do one of the simple classes or are you going to do the expert classes? You know what I mean? It's it's like especially given that D and D used to have expert used to mean something in D and D, like there was the expert rules. Yeah, and uh, so you know that probably matters to only people with gray beards, but um, uh, but it felt like a weird way of categorizing it. I wish they'd come up with another, you know, but but you know who knows. Who knows? So the, the tweaks to the bard class, I do play a bard primarily, a bard sorcerer, and so I did see that there were some changes, but again, it's also early, you know, we're, we're, we're still, if the book's going to come out in 2024, and that means it probably has to be locked in, if it's going to come out in the middle of 2024, that means it has to be locked at the end of 2023, right? Production-wise. They're going to have to get the files to the printer six months, nine months early. Um so there's still a year of kicking the tires and chances for them to change everything. And I, I just feel like they're not really maintaining that notion of it's, you can keep playing 5e in, in this new, in this tweaked environment. The tweaks seem to be getting more and more crazy. Um, I don't know. I don't know. How do you feel about it? Um, you know, I'm the kind of guy that's when the new book comes out, I'll play the new book. Yeah, I mean that's right. That's that's the most reasonable way to go. Right? I'm not gonna sweat. I'm not gonna sweat it now. Um, yeah, like I said, if I really bothered me, I would have. I would have. Would have read this packet. I haven't read this packet yet. <laughs> um, I've been reading more about what other people think of it than what I, than actually. So, which which isn't a bad thing because it gives me stuff to look out for. Um, but I'm not. What's the consensus? What's the consensus among the people you you've seen? Uh they that their defeats at the first level are too powerful but i i'm in the mind you know give a first level character a feat because it, there's these are supposed to be heroes right the players right. they're supposed to be separate than the common person sure. um anybody who complains about realism in a fantasy role playing game has a weak argument this yeah and the and the feats are only the feats are only overpowered giving someone a feat giving a character a feat at level one is only overpowered if the feats are overpowered right if the feats are flavorful more than you know you crit on a 19 and a 20 you know this stuff like it gives everybody five percent more chance to crit you know that really is something that's tweaking the dial in a way that is like could be overpowered so i i, I get what they're saying and and you know if if you're worried about that instead of throwing two rats in the cellar at their first level character throw three rats at them right it's, right uh, I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to just when the new book comes out, devouring the book and you you know, seeing how it is and you know going with it. Then complaining. Yeah. Then uh, <laughs> you know I, I don't. I'm not the kind of person who complains about rules. If I don't like a game, I just don't play it. Makes sense. And you know, and I but I play D and D. There are tons of rules in Dungeons and Dragons that I am just either too lazy to do. That's why I do theater of the mind as opposed to, you know, the tactical sure. stuff. Because that's a lot more rules if you do it that way. If you do it that, can I hit him from here? Yeah, probably. Go for it. You know, it's mm -hmm. a lot easier and a lot more streamlined. Um, that's great. They, it's also, they. Um, I just hope they have, they've got such a network now of professional dungeon masters. I really hope they go and they say, they bring in, I hope they bring in Mercer and Colville and all those and, and uh, Sly Flourish and all of them and bring them in and just, Pay them for a weekend and just pick their brains about how do you feel about this sort of thing? You know, pay them a, pay them a healthy stipend that Hasbro can easily pay and get their feedback on it. Like, you know, if we release this, is this going to ruin your podcast? Basically critical role. If we release this and you have to play with these rules, will your player. Nope. We have a little technical difficulties with uh, Steve. Looks like you froze up on me. Let me 
see if I can reach out to him, see what the situation is. Hold on one second.
Well, hello. Hello. How are you? Fantastic. Florida. That is, uh, it's been last, last three hours, not a blink, not a blip, but <laughs> two minutes ago, everything shut off and it came right back. So there's clearly still messing with the wires and everything. <sighs> I got to use our be right back with this. Oh, good, good, good. The critical Sorry snail logo. So <laughs> I'll create a, I'll create a, uh, we're experiencing technical difficulties graphic for us with us. Like show just like that cartoon wind blowing <laughs> just <laughs> all my stuff going sideways um amazingly enough we didn't lose any of our four viewers thank you for being here four viewers yeah so um so anyway where were we i don't know all right let's my, uh... my brain also shut down and came back up <laughs> um okay so we're gonna have matt forbick come on in a few weeks um Fantastic. and he Besides creating and working on like the Marvel multiverse role playing game that's coming out and every other role playing game that's been out in the on this planet, um, his latest was the shotguns and sorcery. That is a mighty tome. Now this is the cipher system. This is how it came out originally, but as of this week, these started hitting. This is the fifth edition version. Oh wow! So. We are, oh, and I just noticed that. Look, mine's autographed. Nice. Uh, he worked on it with um, his son. And um, so I got I got this on his Kickstarter. And uh, I've talked to Matt before on uh, various occasions. He's a great guy, uh, full of wisdom about uh, role-playing games, designing role-playing games, and um, writing in general. So it's going to be an interesting talk. I'm going to pitch a couple ideas that, that I have for for uh, shotguns or shotguns and sorcery. Like creating a module or, or well, yeah, some ideas, you know, um, but uh, no, it's going to be a great, great conversation. So if you've got any questions about designing Steve, this is the guy to ask and this is when you want to ask him. So that's great. We got I'll, that coming I'll... up. I think he was just coming back from Switzerland right now. He's on a plane, I think, as we record this because he was doing some writing for a role-playing game or video game or something over there um all right so how do i cover this i got really really angry last night oh no it's catacombs and comedians related i just happened to be scrolling through facebook as one does to get uh hey hello first time chatter Brother Zeus, thank you. Welcome to the welcome to the stream. So anyway, Catacombs and Comedians, my live uh, actual play Dungeons and Dragons show that I do at comedy clubs here in Nashville and Huntsville. We are doing good, Brother Zeus. How are you? And I happen to see that there's another comedy club in Nashville that is doing a live Dungeons and Dragons show. Okay. All right. Well, that's fine. Sincerest, I, sincerest form of flattery. I don't, you know, I don't own the, you know, copyright on the concept of doing Dungeons and Dragons shows in, uh, in comedy clubs. So, but, so I'm like, huh, I've been doing it here in Nashville for, and this is just, this is just me griping and complaining. So, sure. Um, I've been doing it here in Nashville since, what was it, uh, May, I think. I've had four, three shows in Nashville so far, two in Huntsville. And, you know, I'm like, oh, well, obviously, someone got the idea of this from my show. I mean, sure. they're like, hey, look, they're doing it over at Zany's. We can do it over here at this club. Sure. Fine, you know. Um, but I'm like, oh, kind of would have liked a heads up. Is that is that wrong for me to? No, I mean, to I, I think you're right. I think it's of course it's a it's a it's a gut punch. It's also a thing where, for all I know, these this zanies and this other comedy club are, are you know antagonistic. You know, I know some com I know some comic book shop retailers who can feel like the other guy in town is the enemy. Right. And so, 
they might look at okay what's it, always looking at what the other comedy club is doing you know and like oh they're doing D D. uh you you've got dice have a show here you know so it it, it, it it's definitely going to confu- create confusion in the marketplace do you know what they're called well not, not to give them any i don't even say their name out loud the distinguished competition as marvel used to say about dc comics uh i do uh, know what they're called and they using a name that i think somebody else already uses too on a streaming but it's not them yeah so uh, let them know (laughs) so (laughs) and here's here's the uh, here's my major problem with it and i i i think i'm just gonna leave it at that there is some more issues to the matter but i don't want this to just where i'm you know laying out all my dirty laundry um, I'll talk to you off stream about it. Just to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this is a platform for venting. So I would say, uh, but I think you're, yeah, I understand. As someone who had one of my IPs literally, liberally, someone came up with something extremely, like they gave it the same name, but I didn't have a protection for it. You know, I didn't I didn't take the steps that I needed to take, which, which I now do with all my stuff. But I feel like you, if you've got your, You've got your existing audience. You've got the people who love you. the The thing that sucks is if they say, "Okay, we're gonna have a D and D game, and we're bringing in Patton Oswalt for hours." Yeah, you know, that's the part where you go, like, Shh, you know, that. But they can't afford Patton Oswalt, and their DM doesn't have as magnificent a beard as you. They don't have a foul bore. You know, <laughs> uh, they can't compete. Uh, thanks for the follow, brother Zeus. Um, yeah, and and they're they will never get Patton Oswalt, so I'm not worried about that. Um, the and i'm gonna go check out their show i'm gonna go it also could be a sense of like the rising tide lifts all boats as long as they're not as long as they're not on the same night as long as they're not they're they're doing four or five shows a week apart which i can never get zany's comedy club to do for me ah because they've got you know bigger name talents coming in and taking up the show taking up those spots which is fine and completely understandable this club this club is more of a kind of a comedy theater a lot of improv gotcha gotcha gotcha. um but just the way they word it as stand-up comics playing dungeons and dragons you know if they had gone improv group playing dungeons and dragons i'd be no big deal because at my last show at huntsville there is a show there in Huntsville that started before mine, but it's improv doing Dungeons and Dragons. Right. And they don't sit at a table and play with that, you know, kitchen table type experience that we try to do in our, our show. They actually have costumes and scripts and all that sort of stuff. Mm. So it's a completely different show. And they showed up and saw and watched my show. Oh, wow. Last. And we Was talked. Right? Yeah. So that, that's it. I mean, maybe that's the approach. Maybe it's a notion of like, it's also tough because also I know, comic convention promoters and like someone's got a show in in a a city like daytona and another show is like i want to have a show in daytona and they're like well you can't we already have a show in daytona but nothing stops someone else from having a show in daytona Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's not like how do you what is you know i I don't know it i I think it forces you to develop a secret so a, a special sauce that can be your own thing and maybe it's the catacombs and comedians brand maybe it's the merchandise maybe it's the partnering with the local TTRPG creative community, the the makers. Um, maybe you're going to throw a convention. I'm gonna, maybe, I'm, well, I've given everyone stickers. Hopefully that works, right? I could. It could. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they're, you know, the that separates, you know, critical role from everybody else that imitates them. You know, that, I got to think that's your. Yeah. I mean, my first response, you know, talking to people in the know i'm like well that you know they're like well there's nothing we can do about it and i go no except be a better show right and but it's just oh and there is one element i will share with you off stream and i'm uh, sorry for the, you those of you watching <laughs> but i just i just uh yeah and um so i mean they have one show the week i have my show but it's on a different night which is you know oh well um, I don't think their club sits as many as our club, um, but I don't, you know, and it's cheap. Their show is cheaper. I don't know all the details about their show, but it's definitely going to be worth checking out and I will check it out and I will give a full report. Um, 
hopefully everything works out amicably and we're all you know yay for the dungeons and dragons comedy club scene in nashville you know this is where you want to come you know forget the nashville being the home of uh bachelorette parties it's nashville is now the home of stand-up comics doing D D, which would be great i thought and oh, and having watched your show and this is not me blowing smoke or just because we're friends it honestly is entertaining and i find that super challenging for D. i know my dungeon master can't watch any streaming D. he can't he just he can't watch critical role doesn't doesn't find that remotely entertaining so I, and i've watched a lot of them and a lot of them are they're slogs Yours is entertaining. I feel like you've got something here. And the, even the, the way the there is a chemistry that comes almost curmudgeonly in a way, the way you have to sometimes browbeat your players into playing the game <laughs> and the way they push back like dad, you know, you're like, I'll pull this, I'll pull this car right around. Look, 18 more foul ball walk in the room. You know, it, it is kind of this. <laughs> It's fun. It is lightly adversarial. I think old school gamers would enjoy it. I think new school new school role players will enjoy it. Again, I would say you people you have nothing to worry about. So, I mean, I, so that's my opinion. I mean, it, it feels like all the people who imitated Superman, all the people who imitate Critical Role, all the people who imitate Lord of the Rings, you know, you know, and, and every once in a while something can rise up. You can have a Harry Potter come out of nowhere. You know, that can be, isn't there a million other things like that? And it explodes. Um, I do feel like you have a, you have a, an alchemical combination that is, would be hard to replicate in a laboratory setting. Uh, yeah. And it's, trust me, I did for the show that, that has, it's come out is completely different than what I have imagined it. And I love it for all of it, you know, warts and all. And um, it's funny that you mentioned that whole, you know, dad type role, because I finally got it, you know, time and this morning i uploaded two new podcasts of catacombs i uploaded the last uh, zany show because i because i forgot to lo- load that up because i had the video available mm. so now you can hear the audio on the podcast and i uploaded last the uh, the huntsville show from two weeks ago and they do refer to me as daddy in that you know and it kind of get a little a little weird at parts uh <laughs> <laughs> well good but uh and then again i did throw oh so you handled those two spiders fine here come four more so i totally did that but i don't i don't know how if that other show is doing like weekly shows for four, four or five weeks how to get comedians to commit to that many weeks in a row i think i, it's I feel an, like the wheels could come off real easy i think it's an improv group oh, oh, oh okay and they're using the term comedians loosely gotcha 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 um and again i'm not i have no idea who th- mostly who's involved and so i'm not i'm i'm not shitting on him or i'm not ta- bad talking to him other than i'm disappointed that there's another here's hey geek puppet thanks for following i love how my follow graphic is showing up now so you're hey, missing out puppet. steve and uh you know and i hope it i hope it's just great and i hope i go to the show and it's amazing and i can the next time i do a show i say hey if you like this show please go to this club and watch this show there you'll get more you know and I'm hoping everything works out super fantastic. Just last night as I'm running along, you know, f- jumping around, Fraley, thanks for showing up, finally. I'm not, you know, <laughs> keeping attendance. Hey, <laughs> and, um, you know, so I hope it's all great and we're one huge family. I haven't seen this other show promoted on some of the local um, role-playing groups uh, right. that I that I do my promotion on that I've kind of you know working on getting rapport with the local you know d d community um because that's what I'm hoping for you know I won't again I'm really I'm I've come across stressing how it's all about community I mean earlier in this in this stream I was talking about how I'm getting the vendors together and we're commuting you know promoting community so by the fact that I'm bitch moaning about this other d d show don't Take it as now I'm not promoting. No, community. no, 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 no. It, 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 I don't feel like it's that way. It is sort of like you have a pizza place and across the street opens up another pizza place. It, <laughs> it, it doesn't, it's not like it's, it's, I don't think it's, no, I, I feel like you have every right to go, well, this could, this is not good for either of us necessarily to open up two shops. That's why most shopping centers, you can't have a second nail salon in it. You can't have a second pizza place in it because the the landlord just says no 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 you got a, you got dibs but i under, i understand where you're coming from it's, yeah. it's so again i'm gonna go to the show i hope i love it i hope it's awesome i've been going to been meaning to go to this club anyway i've kind of been thinking about 
maybe talking to the club about doing stuff there too, but now they've already got their own D and D show. So I don't need, <laughs> need to worry well, about well, that. Who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll invite you to sit in and play a game, um, you know, but you can't really sneak in anywhere. You're going to show up in those glasses with that beard. They're going to, they're going to know who you are. <laughs> oh, this is fake. Didn't I? No. <laughs> so yeah. Imagine, um, in two weeks or yeah, two weeks or so when I do the Halloween show, I am in costume. And I'm Eddie Munson from Stranger Things, but I'm not shaving the beard. No, I, no, no. I'm looking at my wig. I got the wig hanging over there. I'm going all all out, but except the wig stays on. I mean, the beard stays on. And I don't know how long the wig will make it through the show. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. So apparently, at least here in Nashville, the live Dungeons and Dragons with comics at comedy clubs scene is catching on. Yeah. I'm not going to say I'm a trendsetter, but just saying there was no trend until you said it. <laughs> I was first. I was, I was first. And um, also it's a, it's a thing where, again, it, we talk, I talked about this with the, some of the cartoonists I speak with. There's a certain amount of people who early with web comics, someone saw Penny Arcade and PVP were very popular. Oh, comics about gaming, you know? Oh, so I'll do one about gaming. But the person was like, I want to be popular. I want to make money. So they're, going to do something about something that really isn't in their heart and it's easy to do for a little while a couple of easy jokes because everyone knows the surface level stuff but it was always the deeper stuff that got the that built those other things around says your your love of D D and rpgs is is deeper it's not a surface level thing and that's not something you can necessarily fabricate so i feel like again authenticity a weird alchemical chemistry you've got going on i, I feel like you know, good players too, entertaining, and they they push back just enough, I think, and, <laughs> and, and they work the crowd. They do a lot of stuff. They do a lot of heavy lifting for you, and they're not stepping over each other. It's, it seems really nice. No, it's it. You know, to be honest with you, I do love all my players, um, both groups, the the uh, Nashville gang, the Huntsville gang, and then the third gang. Let me talk about this for a little bit. Please do. I was about to ask that. Um. And I had a, I made a, I made a trailer for it, and I, it's up online. I don't know if you caught it. Did you see that little credits? No. Trailer? It's, but I got, a, I was going to share it tonight to, on the stream today, but I found out I misspelled one of the comics' names. Oh. The stupid okay. I before E, type of thing. The damn Germans. <laughs> and um, so anyway, it's, it's on my, uh, it's on the Catacombs of Comedians Twitter and Facebook right now. But I'll, I will change, I will take it down and fix the name but it, it turned out really nice it's it's going to be the opening credits for the uh stream it's about a minute long um and it introduces each player and the character that they're playing and um and it's called uh, catacombs of comedians wrath of the aristocrats love it love it and i got the music timed up just right it's oh when it's when the wrath of Recru Re aristocrats shows up that just timed with the music it turns can you share it here i don't think anyone here would mind it's a typo um let me see if it's a technical issue don't don't worry about it but now nah, we can do it hold give me one minute yeah 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 uh let me find it do, 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 do. I
dude. And there we go. That was it. Dude, that looks great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> did uh, Steve Musgrave do the artwork? Yeah, he did the he did the uh, character artwork this time around. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, because I, I I love Steve Stephen Coughlin's artwork for the original for the first round of characters, and you know I will bring Coughlin back on to work with him. But I'm kind of want Catacombs of Comedians to get the brand you know set. Sure. So uh, Steve Musgrave's doing the art for characters and monsters just to give it, you know, I want it to have that distinct look and feel yeah. that he's and been he, developing. He does have kind of a uh, Penny Arcade vibe to his, just a, a hint of it. I'm, I, I hate to ever talk about one artist in contact of another artist because, you know, it's not like they were looking at the other artist. There's more for, maybe they have the same inspirations, the same influences in their art. Uh, but it's got that kind of vibe that I think people would be like, okay, it's sort of like with Intoximancy. Oh, that looks that looks professional. <laughs> <laughs> it is professional. Is how it, that's the trick. You make it professional, and so it looks professional. But um, it 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 passes the smell test. People are like, oh, okay, that's legit. Yeah. So that's my li that's that'll be the opening credits. Though I will spell Log I will spell Logan's last name correctly before it goes up. Looks great. Um, thank Amazing. you. Thank you. Um, and that will start October twelfth. And then October 13th, I will go see that other show at the other club. <laughs> All right. So let me see if I get this right. I have my calendar up. Oh, it was before the, my, everything crashed. October 12th. What day is that? That's I a Wednesday. It. All right. Fantastic. And I can't wait to see it. That'll be here on Zero Level Media uh, Twitch channel. Um, and, uh, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, the players have come up with some great concepts. Uh Remember Raina's character's last name, uh, Misty Kuntz. It's sp pronounced Kuntz. <laughs> um, so you, that kind of gives you an idea of what kind of... Good. It's yeah. going to be fun. It's not going to be for kids. Um, no. Oh, let me tell you about this. So All Logan's right, character idea, he's a paladin. And his god is kind of a game he's he's a normal he's a normal kid who got brought to this world by playing a jumanji type game that's his okay. character concept that's great and so the last two weeks i've been busting my brain nut trying to come up with what is the name of this game and um oh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna show it now but i just gotta i want to make sure i can see it right um you made a graphic already oh yeah it's got of its own yeah it's got its own title dressing you know of course you did <laughs> yeah it's called questernity oh wait i saw that on twitter yeah or, realm or, of or, infinite or, adventure I had, I had flashes of internet over the last few days and that that scrolled up i'm like well okay but he's got something else cooking i love it so i want to be i want to do a game I want to see now the, the creator in me wants to create the whole game that that's based on, you know, <laughs> some throwaway joke. I want to create a whole role playing game based on it. Sure. Um, it's much better. The first name I had just did not work, but this is what I settled on. The logo looks neat. But the way this game works is I think you use all the dice at once. The four, hmm. six, eight, 12 and 20. I'm taking the 10 out. Because back in the old days, they, they didn't have a 10-sided dice. You used a 20 for 10-sided rolls. So that gives you a number between 5 and 50 with all those number with all those dice together. Mm. So now i got to think up some sort of mechanic. And just for the craziness of it, you know. Yeah. And I think at the beginning of each of this game, or one point during the game, he can make a, a, a questernity roll where his roll, he rolls all five dice at once. And if he beats my roll, he gets inspiration. But that's just, you know, that's just one little house rule to add flavor to the game. Love it. That's great. So his whole thing with his characters, he goes on these quests in this world, thinking each one will bring him home if he completes it. Each, nice. ev each The more evil he defeats, the closer he gets to get going home. Kind of a Sam Beckett uh, quantum leap type of thing. Right, right. That's great. Um, so that's it. Or like a, a one-man D&D animated series yeah exactly we're, we're always trying to beat the thing to go home or something like that yeah and then of course uh steph stigma their character is just 
three goblins in a trench coat <laughs> based on the three goblins are based on emo phillips gilbert godfrey and rodney dangerfield fantastic <laughs> what a nightmare <laughs> and i don't know how she's gonna play him you know we went back and forth and i said look i have faith in you you if you can handle it roll up three different characters you can only play one at one one at a time but you know we'll figure it out just whatever That's makes great. this show good and um you know her experience playing D D, I i think she can pull it off so i'm all for it uh Raina's character misty Kuntz, is just that uh we'll just leave it at that and then um kanan's i have no idea other than his character is a half elf bard who smokes a cigar so and it kind of looks like uh what's his name dum dum from captain america's oh, a little bit Nick sure Fury's. sure yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um so yeah so a lot that's why i just this morning finally put up like catacombs and comedian podcast that have been sitting on my hard drive forever i just got the time put those up this morning so you can check those out the last two shows and if you haven't heard any catacombs and comedian shows check them out at catacombs and comedians podcast it's available wherever you listen to your podcast um you got a lot of listening to do the halloween show will be we will have video of that as well, at least the one in Zany's. It won't be live stream, but we'll have that available. So if you've seen the other, you can watch the other show. If you go on the Zero Level Media Twitch site, it won't come up on the its channel homepage. But if you look under videos, it's loaded up there. So you got to do a little digging, but it's there. You can find it. Um, and that was a show, the last show at Zany's we did about a month and a half or so ago. Uh, I think that's all my catacombs and comedians. That's great stuff. I'm right so now. excited. I'm so excited for the call. <laughs> I mean, I, since I'm so, I live so far away, I can't catch the live shows. So, uh, you know, the yeah, idea of being I, able to actually see one live is going to be exciting. I'm just hoping that everyone, as the producer, I'm hoping that everybody has a well lit, clean camera, decent microphone, no power outages. Yeah, the decent mic, you know. Um, and I don't want to be, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to be a hard ass and say, look, you got to, you know, go out and buy a light even Greg, you know, but right. hopefully. So expect on the 12th, there will be some hiccups, but, you know, sure. we'll That's get them fine. all ironed out. And that'll Again, be if you watch early critical role. It's like, you know, they, I think they have one microphone that they're all sharing and it's, you know, they're drawing their maps on butcher paper and it's all chaos. So, yeah. It's so fine. it'll definitely be chaos if it's anything like the live shows at the comedy clubs. Um still waiting on word from a couple other clubs if we're going to come up to cincinnati or birmingham that's great there's talk but not a lot of it lately a lot of leaving phone messages um i'm not really actively pursuing it i'm not going out there saying hitting clubs up it's mostly been hey this club says they're interested in you then i give them a call you know right so we'll see how that goes um but yeah and then my catacomb related um kickstarter will be out i think i'll send it out the third week in october to everybody that's great um the physical pro stuff might come out the fourth week but i think the third week i'll have it all finished up and nice and ready to go the way i want it it's i could send it out now but i just don't it needs a few more tweaks and you understand that yeah yeah my, my i've ended up expanding the it started off as 20 pages, the Intoximancy book, and now it's up to 32. And what I've done is, is I had this section, of, so for, for folks who don't know, it was a Kickstarter, ended last month. Um, and uh, it's a, uh, maybe three weeks ago it ended. Uh, it feels weird with the hurricane rolling through. Um, but uh, it's about, you know, a drunken master of the mystic arts. It's a wizard subclass with alcohol. And uh, I have a pipe weed variant in it for people who don't want to drink but want to smoke their pipe weed. Yeah, and I so know what that means, yeah. That's that was a it was basically I was gonna be a one page swap out these rules and now it's turned into four pages because it has to be very specific given how complicated I've made everything else. What you couldn't make it four twenty pages? <laughs> uh, uh, so don't just four just the four. Uh, I wonder if it's on page twenty. It might be. It can, it can be. I'll mess around with it. I'll mess around with it. <laughs> um, but it's four pages. I, and it, so it's it's basically changing how all the 
you know, subclass features work and then how when you get your magic, instead of a magical flagon, you get a magical pipe. And it's it's much more streamlined. The the flag and I give people all these a menu of choices on how they can decorate and accent their uh, their magical item. The pipe is going to be much more straightforward, so it's not going to have that decision tree. It's going to be very basic because I, I, again, it's it, it, I don't want it to overwhelm the book. And uh, I just finished illustrations for flying pink elephants, so uh, I I feel like the book's really coming together. I just have to do three or four more passes to correct my typos and to make think make sure things are consistent throughout all that all the the drudgery of it but i'm super happy with how it's coming together okay I, I mean from what you sent me i love it it looks great oh I, thanks i haven't gotten back to you on any of it but uh it is being perused um great. and appreciated and it's that's you know but then i having worked with you before on the star trek comic and then just following along with other stuff you've done i expect nothing less yeah it's just tough it's you know it's, it's all these things where it's like you have like a, a the, the magic flag and can every day can uh conjure health potion so it's things like making sure that you just aren't pouring them into vials every day so putting in like a time limit on it. if you don't drink it within a minute it evaporates putting in stuff like that so people don't become like a you know a health potion factory i'm not i'm, not, I'm gonna give up adventuring and just sit in the cottage and pour health potions into uh, bottles well, all day it has to be drunk from the from the flagon right yes to work yes yeah. But yeah, uh, basically anything that's filled out. But I, but the more I hard code the rules about all that stuff becomes super complicated and it becomes stereo instructions. And I do want to give people latitude to be creative and, and but just it would be so I can understand why Crawford and all those people make the rules very simple and they keep referring back to them. And when we say it, it never works, blah, 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 we mean it never works. And they go, but what about here? I said, it never works. Like they always point back to the original rules. I feel like I have to have that same kind of, uh, <laughs> I'll put it on the morning hangover quite a bit, quite a bit, the hair of the dog, uh, my geek puppet. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's very, it, I don't know, I'm very happy with it. I can't wait for everybody to see it. Well, yeah, and then I, I can't wait for you to make more, so. Yeah, and, and I just and I just uh, right before the storm hit, I was able to finish up the backer kit page. So if anyone goes to intoximancy.com, the uh, the link from the Kickstarter will take them to the backer kit, and they can just order it now. I'll be running more Facebook ads to promote the backer kit. I want to see if that does anything too. I'll keep you posted if that has any effect whatsoever. Um, all right, so I think we've gone about an hour of discussion. I am out of coffee. Yeah. Um. Next week, you're in town, right? We're talking. I would love to. Okay. Assuming I'll have power, assuming I'm not, I'm not swept out to sea. Ray, assuming you're not powered, do not sign off, Steve, because I'm going to tell you the juicy gossip I can't share with the world. All um, right. I want to thank everybody who joined us. I think this has been our greatest uh, morning crowd, and uh, hopefully, you'll spread the word and come and join Steve and I as we talk Dungeons and Dragons and creativity in the future. As always, be sure to follow at the Steve Conley at Twitter. Follow myself at the, or no, I'm not a the, as if there's another one of me, at Dan Leon Taylor um, at Twitter and uh, Catacombs and Comedians. Uh, there have been a bunch of links popping up here in the stream chat. Follow all of those because we put them up there for a reason. We love you and may you make all of your saving throws. <laughs>